This is Bill Schultz, historical writer for the Medical College of Wisconsin, and I have with me today Mark Tomsky, class of 1984. Mark, thanks a lot. We're going to enjoy this interview. And what I'm going to ask you first is tell me a little bit about your background. Where are you from? I'm from the south side of Milwaukee. So, But where? Tell me. like I grew know, up in St. Francis, uh, up in the south side of town, and uh, finished from St. Francis High School. And... Uh, when I graduated from high school, I uh, went into the Army uh, between 19, uh, June of 1973 uh, uh, and uh, 1976. So I was elderly when I started college. I was 20. You're, when, you're, I, when, I, when I went into the Army, I was Yeah, 17. you're pushing your, yourself back to my age. Yeah. Because you graduated from high school at 73. Three. Three. Yeah, so we're closer in age than uh, you'd like to think. <laughs> the, uh, well, that's great. And... Where did you, uh, after Army, where did you do your undergrad? Uh, I'm one of the uh, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee alums, and I finished there in 1980, right before I started at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Great. Did you go through that uh, program that UWM had that was uh, the preparatory? Uh, I, I know uh, Brian Bear, our current uh, right. uh, and Robbie McDonald is well known in his McDonald right. family, but I was not an official member, but I did, uh, I did uh, sneak into one of their classes. I took one of the Target MD, Target uh, MD. Target MD uh, biochemistry courses with uh, Vita Vitalingam, who was a professor of uh, biochemistry at the medical college. So I, 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 I got in and I, I hung out with them as much as I could and took advantage of uh, some of their well, opportunities. Well, even our current dean, Dr. Kirshner, is a graduate of that Target MD program. The uh, other question I have is obviously you, you made it into the Medical College of Wisconsin, which is great, but what about your decision to go to medical school and become a doctor? When did Can you remember when that took place in your life? Well, it's a, I'll, I'll tell you a personal story. Yeah. Um, basically, I grew up in a very uh, challenged environment, and uh, the Medical College of Wisconsin, I want to tell this story, and I thought about this mm -hmm. a lot. It goes back, uh, to, uh, its influence on my life in Marquette goes back to before I was born. Um, when I was eight years old, um, and then again when I was nine, my father had uh, two psychotic breaks. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's really interesting because um, Dr. Peter O'Loughlin, Marquette class of 1955, was a resident when my dad got sick. Dr. O'Loughlin had actually done a uh, residency in physical medicine rehabilitation, which is my specialty, and later went back into psychiatry. And when my dad got sick, um, these were the days when uh, he, as it turns out, when he passed away, uh, he suffered what were called two brief psychotic breaks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the attending physician told uh, Dr. Laughlin, do whatever you want. My father was beyond the point of no return. Well, through his kindness, uh, Dr. Laughlin treated my dad, and then he had a relapse the following year. So I was pretty traumatized, age eight, age nine. How old was your dad at the time? Oh, he's 25 years, was 25 years my senior, so he's in his 30s. Yeah. And, uh, and so um, because of the kindness of Dr. O'Loughlin, um, my father was a teamster, and uh, he couldn't go back to work on medicines. And uh, through the power, he was a very religious man, and through the power of the rosary, um, which was prescribed by Dr. O'Loughlin, um, my father... Uh, was able to uh, go uh, and complete his working life and was retired at age 62 and he lived until he was 77. Oh, and so I really am looking back, you know, and why is the medical college so important to me? Uh, because it's an alma mater. It's really uh, gave me birth and it gave... Um, my brother, an opportunity for us to uh, express our talents. Wow. And so, um, given that background, and you know, uh, my mother was overwhelmed and was not a good mother, 
you know, when everybody says, oh, you got two doctors and my other brother's working on this, a doctor, his third graduate degree, your parents must have supported, they didn't. Yeah. They were not capable of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things I've noticed, I'm a rehabilitation doctor. I take care of people who have had serious problems. And uh, you know, my mother, you know, when my dad was sick, I, she didn't get me glasses, didn't, so I was, had a lot of neglect and I had a lot of trauma. And despite that, um, things have really taken shape because of the school. Firstly, because of Dr. O'Loughlin, who I talked to when my father passed, you know, just mm -hmm. to check in with him. And I, I want to come back to him uh, later, and I don't, I don't know <clears throat> if you'll have a chance to interview him. He's a terrific guy. And he's still with us because he, I... He was still with us seven years ago. He's only a year ahead of my father. My father would have just so. had his uh, 86th birthday, so he'd be about 87, class of 55. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I didn't, uh, I didn't know. So when I was a ninth grader, and I, I started school, I was 13 years old, I took biology, and I thought, boy, I'd like to be either a dentist or a doctor. But I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah. I mean, I was like, that's, you know, that's not going to happen. But I, I mean, I was, I was through this. So what I'm manifesting is known as, uh, what, what, what's coming to full potential is called the wounded healer archetype. Because if you don't have your own wounds, mm -hmm. you can't really meet people yeah. at a deep level. And you've done that through your career. It's been amazing. And so <clears throat> I had to get out of the house as soon as I could when I was 17, given that history. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, gee, I thought that was a good, yeah. Vietnam's going on, a good time to jump into the service. Yeah, right. Um, it was because, you know, things were as they were, which were a bit chaotic still, and, 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 and so on. So I went in. And that was 73? 73, 73. 17 years old? 17 years old. Yeah. I go into the army, and uh, I luckily, uh, my mother kind of tricked me. I initially signed up to go into the infantry because I thought chicks dig guys with guns. <laughs> Seventeen, that's yeah, how you know, think, right? And uh, but she brought my uh, father's cousin, who was um, quite a bit younger. Uh, than my dad, his third cousin, and he always had beautiful girlfriends. So I looked up to him. He just happened to buy, and he had been a draftee. He started telling me about getting shot at and sleeping on rocks, and uh, and so I had signed up in March of my senior year to go in as soon as I could get out of high school to get out of Dodge in June, and uh, so uh, wait a minute. So I was able to finagle. And I was able to get into health care. Given that background, I eventually became a dental hygienist. Through, through, through your army? Through the army. So yeah. I, I started treating patients as first as a dental assistant when I was 17. So I've been in health care since I'm 17. And you were, oh, again, tell me how many you were in the army till what? Three, 76. Okay, okay. For those three years yeah. on active duty. And through that, yeah. uh, I met Liz in the reserves mm -hmm. and uh, we got married in 77. Mm -hmm. So I got married right away out of the army. Uh, and so I thought I'd be a dentist. So I, I met Liz in this uh, dental company, dental reserve unit, uh, finishing my last three years of active reserve duty. And uh, so I thought from the time I was young, I wanted to either be a dentist mm -hmm. or a doctor. So I'm sitting in the back room and um, doing a week weekend reserve duty in the, we had, because this was a time people trying to avoid Vietnam, there were a lot of dental students who were there who never mm -hmm. just did reserve duty. I had done active duty. And they say, well, Mark, how are your grades? And uh, yeah. I told them, I said, oh, man, you got, you got grades good enough to go to medical school. You should go to medical school. We hate dental school. Oh, <laughs> and so 
these are guys I knew I liked, and subsequently I've talked to actually a couple of physicians who dropped out of dental school, and they told me the same story, how much they hated I, dental. I know a dental. number that were dentists first, and then went to medical school. Yeah, yeah, because they hated, they hated it. And, but that was my experience in healthcare okay. was dental. Yeah. And so, so I thought, oh, what the heck? But then again, things go on, and I get married, and I'm worried, you know, how am I going to survive? You know, survival is always... And especially given my background, a um, significant issue. So I got accepted to pharmacy school, but then mm -hmm. I decided. So I, Liz and I, we looked at apartments in Madison and all this kind of so you stuff. So you got a, a UW Madison for pharmacy? Yeah, it was accepted, but then I decided to go for broke. And uh, did, you, did you apply at both MCW and I UW? applied early decision. I had no idea. I applied early decision. Uh, to the Medical College of Wisconsin, and uh, luckily got in. Great. And uh, one of the interviewers is a classmate, uh, Dave Stowe. He's a Department of Physiology and mm -hmm. Anesthesiologist, and we were internal medicine residents at Mount Sinai together. That was the only break from my medical college yep. train was that year that Dave and I were over part of the mm -hmm. University of Wisconsin system. So that's kind of like how I got into it, and uh, and uh, it's really been a blessing to be able to express my talents yeah. um, because of the school. Yeah. And also you had a tough background, you and your, your, your brother, what is your brother's name again? Steve. Steve, yeah, class of 86. And then you said your other brothers got degrees, so you guys have all, uh, is it just the three of you guys? Just three okay. boys, yeah. The, uh, you know, at, at the medical college, and I, you know, I, knowing you as I do, I'm sure there uh, were a few of your uh, professors that maybe, uh, or maybe one or two that, uh, you remember better than others, good or bad, it doesn't matter. We're not worried if you say something uh, negative. We just won't put it out to the public. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, you know, it's interesting. Um, you know, I've reflected a little bit about this, and um, it's interesting because I think what we're talking about here is, uh, you know, mystery cannot be explained. It only can be revealed. So uh, Ken Sigismund was a neuroanatomy professor, mm -hmm. And he actually, the weekend my father passed, he was giving a talk on the soul oh, really? as a part of science, some new thought science of mind church after he had retired. Well, Ken, as I learned, was, had been a botanist. His doctorate had, was in botany and he became a professor of neuroanatomy at the school. But he always had uh, little quotes oh. on his uh, lecture handouts. And uh, they, they stick. So his, one of his was, uh, Dust Thou Love Life, that do not squander time, for that is the stuff that life is made of. And so, he needs uh, his own. He needed his own calendar, wherever under every day there's a quote. Pretty much, he was he was like that. And so, from the basic sciences, and uh, Stu Goldman was a practitioner in the Department of Family Medicine, taught me uh, physical diagnosis for the f first two years, and he was really uh, good to me. I. And then um, I'm going to talk here a little bit about how the Department of Psychiatry um, influenced me and uh, when I give up my talk on mind-body medicine mm -hmm. later at this conference. And uh, so I got a chance through the medical school when I was still, I had worked at uh, St. Mary's Hill Hospital as a child care counselor doing a lot of direct patient care. After I was accepted, early decision, I worked for that year uh, uh, on the second shift. So I finished my degree during the day and worked full time. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, this is a pretty typical Milwaukee story, I think, at least from the days I was there. Yeah, and even earlier, working, working part time or working and going to school. Yeah. And so, um, but I was interested having worked at the psychiatric hospital now, I had avoided it because of my father's illness. All, I'd never mm -hmm. studied it in, um, in college because it, I had a lot of uh, concerns and fears and you know, you're know you young and what, what is that? Well, I, somehow I got this job. Again, how did I end up doing direct patient care? Because my bachelor's degree is in zoology, not psychi psychology. And so I had an opportunity first uh, to, uh, start a psychiatric journal club my first and second year. I asked... Was that at MCW? At MCW. Yeah. And uh, I went to Dr. Spiro and I said, I don't have much psychology background, but I worked at this psychiatric hospital and 
I'm interested, and he says, great, and he set this up, and Carlisle Chan, who's now the uh, pro program director, was a brand new faculty member at that time. This is yeah. 1980, he was just out of his, his residency. Yeah, class invited of 75. Us, yeah, brought us over to his house, provided great food, good uh, nourishment, both beer and snacks and munchies, and we went to a number of the faculties. Uh, Homes once a month for the first two years, reading papers, and then um, back in the Department of Psychiatry, one of the staff people, Betsy Collins, um, I said, "What can I do more?" She set me up with a paid um, uh, externship, so I worked with Ashok Betty uh, in uh, at Milwaukee Psych, doing group therapy, sat in in his own therapies, and uh, and so um, that was profound. And, she, and I got paid $400 for the summer, and I worked full-time third shift. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just a typical Milwaukee guy. You found about three hours of sleep and... Uh... And, and those, those sort of things. And uh, Ashok, he changed my life because I thought, because of this background I tell you about, I thought, man, I, I'm interested in this. Well, I got to know him personally, and what Liz and I and his wife, Usha, went out and uh, he finished his residency uh, at the medical college and he's now a clinical professor. Um, and at that time he was in uh, the Freudian training program at the in uh, Chicago Institute of Psychoanal Psychoanalysis. Later he dropped out and became a union analyst. But we're sitting around he's, and I was really enamored with him, bright guy and all this. Tells me about his brother the orthopedist who said Ashok, why are you going, you're so good. Why, are, not that there's anything, I love psychiatry and, and, I, and I'm so grateful for psychiatry in my family. And he said um, to Ashok, why, why go into psychiatry? Why don't you just get treatment? And I go, so later on in life, when I met you, I was able to go through a long 18 year union analysis. So, I mean, it really kept me out of psychiatry because I thought, oh, you know, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed rehabilitation and the physical aspects and also the psychological aspects. So, the medical school as part of the river of life has been carrying me as a, a, a long big time. Yeah. Where did you, um, okay, you're talking an interest in psychiatry, but then you did PM and R. So where, where did that, you know, do you just, where did you get become enamored with PM&R and where did you do your residency uh, in that? Well, one of my classmates, John Zabrowski, did a externship in PM&R between first and second year. And I was, uh, Dr. Barua, his wife, Gita Barua, Jintendra Barua was a, a neurologist. He did some peripheral neurology stuff in neuroanatomy as a first year student. I was like, this anatomy stuff, these peripheral nerves, how the nervous system works, uh, really uh, fascinated me. My friend did this externship, and um, and so I was going to either, you know, go into three things. I told Stu Goldman, I was go into psychiatry, PM&R, or OBGYN, because I did an externship mm -hmm. with Jack Klieger yeah. uh, over at St. Joe's, and we did transfers, breached twins from below, you know, not a seat. I'm just like the guy was, I was, so, ex, my training at the medical school, superb, everywhere. Um, so I really like neurology, but my experience of neurology, and not, not to uh, diminish neurologists, but it seems like they would make the diagnosis and not do a lot. Mm -hmm. So I liked the knowledge of neurology, but they weren't doing a lot. And there was a huge psychosocial aspects of rehabilitation. And I loved surgery and orthopedic surgery, but mm -hmm. I did not like the operating room because yeah. standing long hours, it's, it's killer on yeah. the body. So I said, well, I like orthopedics and I like neurology and I like psychiatry. And for me, um, Physical medicine rehabilitation can be summed up in one word, and that word is function, mm -hmm. and really make a different in, difference in people's lives. And so I got kind of interested in it as a first-year student, and it just 
slowly came to be. And I was a student. The then uh, chairman, Dr. John Melvin, was the chairman of the Department of Him and Our War. I did do my residency. Over at, at the You spent a lot of time at Curative? Spent time at Curative. And, uh, and, you know, really the whole Medical College of Wisconsin affiliated hospital program gave me a breadth yeah. of experience. And when I joined full time faculty at the University of Washington, um, I was really thinking in terms of uh, nuts and bolts know everything about rehab at the time, state of the art, I got a great education. I brought a lot uh, to the faculty. And did you, have finishing your, your PM&R residency, um, did you then go, that's when you got, uh, joined the faculty out in Washington? So no, the short answer is no. I got, what happened was, I was able to uh, use six of months of my electives and um, I was, when I started as a resident, I was making, uh, when I was in internal medicine, I was making $18,000 a year and had a lot less debt than the current students have, but money was an issue. But I somehow was interested in, in spine and spinal cord stuff, so I ended up using my last six months of uh, my residency as an elective at the VA spinal cord unit and then I did an additional year as a, so I was a spinal cord fellow for mm -hmm. a year and a half. I was, when I was the chief resident in the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehab in 87, then I be, was an assistant instructor in, at the school, and then I became an instructor when I was a fellow. And then I was gonna go into the world. Well, the chief of uh, the spinal cord injury service at the Zablocki Veterans Administration Medical Center at the time is the now chairman, Dennis Maiman. Uh, mm -hmm. So Dennis calls me into his office. Dennis likes me a lot and he changed, Dennis changed my life too. I'm just telling you. Oh, why, he's, a, he's, why, a, he's a good guy. But he's totally, he totally changed my life. So we used to fight and go over x-rays and you know, do the surgical thing and, and uh, we had a lot of, I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot from Dennis and Dennis learned a fair amount of rehab for me. It was a give and take and he was a great guy. Uh, and. Uh, so Dennis calls me and says, Mark, yeah, you're applying for academic jobs, right? I, well, what do you mean? Well, this is an academic fellowship. Well, I did a project and I taught and I did, I, it was a great fellowship. Mm -hmm. One of the best things I ever did in terms of breadth of experience. Um, part of my duties I got to do, for instance, come off the spinal cord unit and uh, run the amputee clinic. And mm -hmm. I was working with uh, the greatest generation, the World War II vets right. were using the old wooden sockets for the amputees and I got to be a chance to work with the prosthetists and orthotists. Mm -hmm. My education at the medical school, I'm telling you, Bill. A to Z. It's, it was the best. Yeah. So Dennis calls me in and says, so you're applying for, I'm like, I'm like, what? I mean, I had no, I just, thought I wanted to learn. Yeah. And that was why I was there as a fellow. So I thought I'd make him happy. And I just applied to all these high powered programs and say, oh, Dennis, I have an interview. I'm going in, down the block and I'm going to practice. And uh, as it turns out, because Dennis um, kind of encouraged me uh, to uh, apply to the University of uh, Washington in Seattle, that's how I ended up on the West mm -hmm. Coast. I became a what year faculty was that? member. That was 89. 89. And yeah. I've been out in the uh, Seattle area ever since. ever since. You know, it's interesting because you're from Milwaukee. And, yeah, uh, and I'm a Milwaukee guy, you know, a Bill. Lot, a lot of people, uh, I mean, they didn't come from Washington or California or one of those states where they come out, they do their medical education and they head back. But you've been there ever since. So obviously it's an area you, you like. Yeah. No, there's, it's, uh, it's a pleasant place to be, Bill. You know, the, uh, you've, and what's really neat, you've, you've mentioned a lot of, a lot of faculty members. Um, the, you know, the, through your, your, medical school and your residency. Uh, I know you've run into some of your classmates here at the clinical conference. Have you stayed in touch with uh, many of your classmates? Well, sometimes, you know, I just saw from my class, Matt, Matt Bruns, who's an oncologist, and he spent 10 years uh, at Oregon Health Sciences University. And, you know, this is also another mystery because, uh, you know, Matt, uh, he ended up going to the medical college because they wouldn't take him because he was an engineering student 4.0 and uh, 
and wouldn't, and the University of Washington wouldn't take him. And so he ended up out here. So he was Alpha Omega Alpha, top guy. University wanted to go into the internal medicine. University of Washington wouldn't take him. He ended up in Portland. He's been in Portland the whole time, and he's got two sisters in Seattle. So he comes up, mm -hmm. and I'll see him from time to time when he comes up to Seattle. Uh, but it's just, this is how this life kind of unfolds, Bill, is uh, truly mysterious. You know, just tell me just a little bit about your, uh, about your career. I mean, I know, I know a little bit about it, but tell, you know, tell me, you know, kind of about it, uh, you know, where you started at University of Washington, and I know you've had some different uh, activities uh, since then. Well, uh, it's interesting. Um, the fellow who's on the search committee uh, with me is now emeritus professor George Kraft recruited me out there on my second interview. So I ended up going out there and it was intense, the most intense interview I ever had. I had uh, 10 interviews a day for two days and I had to give an audition lecture. And I mean it was like intense. Yeah, an audition lecture would be uh, challenging. I mean there's, you know, there's pressure and then there's pressure. Yeah. That's pressure. Yeah. And so my, my time in Washington was uh, I was full-time faculty for two years and I was associated clinically with them for the next 18 for 20 years. Uh, and a uh, good relationship uh, fellow from RIC was turned in, the guy who hired me retired. One of my uh, contemporaries became a uh, the chairman and then a dean and he's moved on and one of my residents there is now the current chairman have a good relationship uh, with with them but uh, uh, I'm interested in uh, manual medicine and osteopathy and when I first came out there I got really interested because I was my first job was uh, associate medical director of the spine resource clinic and using all the allopathic approaches we weren't making a lot of uh, progress with many of the patients and uh, the Michigan State people from the College of Osteopathic Medicine came to the Academy of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation and I started getting involved in that and I just got such good results, uh, it became a passion. Um, and I wanted to pursue that and I wanted to uh, teach it to the residents and you would think this would make a mistake. There's a lot of fear amongst the faculty and uh, I could see um, we could remain friends, but for me to really pursue my interests in uh, the roots of physical medicine, uh, using physical agents and hands-on approaches, wasn't really being supported. Uh, so we parted company very friendly. What year was that? that year? I left full-time in 91, and then I ended up um, not teach, teaching much with them uh, over the course of time between uh, 89 and 09. In 09, I stopped my relationship with them altogether. I gave some lectures and, and so on, but, but my former relationship with the uh, Department of Rehab Medicine ended, and we have a casual, nice relationship in some of the other organizations, but I, I've uh, published on manual medicine. I've uh, been one of the major teachers of manual medicine, uh, both within the American Academy of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation and the Cranial Academy, and presently, so my, my love now is really uh, manual medicine you can't learn from a book. It's an experiential uh, process where anatomy is key, which mm -hmm. I learned great anatomy, both at the, as, at the medical school and as a resident. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, was able to continue to do that. So basically, um, I s had a relationship for a long time, but I continued to teach write and uh, do clinical care and you know have have a good time I have a so, good life well, who you who are you working with now right? well Swedish is a big competitor actually amongst for some mm -hmm. of the contracts within uh, the Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. and the university yeah. so there's kind of a is that Swedish is that a, Swedish hospital Swedish, Swedish medical health? Swedish Medical Center and we're part of Providence Health and Services okay. we have a relationship there and um, in fact, uh, the former chairman of uh, the Department of Orthopedic Surgery is about my age, has joined Swedish about a year and a half ago 
former chairman, used to be uh, vice chair at or Oregon Health Sciences and then Irvine as neurosurgery uh, joined us and I'm there. And we have a lot of really high powered people in the spine world. That's my, yeah. my world and that's, uh, clinically. Yeah, and that's what you like. So it's a, yeah. good, it's a good fit. It's a great fit with really great people and we're, uh, we're doing research and we're, and I'm teaching uh, family medicine residents uh, and fellows. We have an integrative medicine fellowship uh, where uh, the fellows uh, spend their clinical time with me and I tutor them and mentor them on, on their manual skills and we've now got a study group with the people who have graduated from the program and we do about a quarterly program where I'm the faculty and we treat one another and so as these fellows go on into the uh, world uh, and then we're teaching students and then some of our residents so I'm teaching primarily family medicine residents but we also have, have an addiction medicine a fellow that mm -hmm. spent a lot of time with me who does manipulation and then we have pain fellows from the University of Washington that we have come into our office and they've worked with me um, not as much as the others so it's a a powerful teaching that's environment great. so I'm really that what really gives oh, me passion great. and joy what just take just thinking through your career give me a couple of uh, things that jump and maybe it's just the whole career has been a highlight any specific couple of highlights that jump out at you know when you think about it uh, career highlights uh, other I mean maybe it's just working with the residents which is a uh, I know how much uh, people enjoy that well you know, I, I, what, I've, what I've learned is that I have to follow that. Uh, I was uh, really active in uh, the American Academy of Physical Medicine and Rehab, and I just, in terms of the political structure, and I just, that didn't give me as much joy as just teaching. So for me, it's teaching the residents and then uh, teaching, uh, I teach some um, fully practicing physicians, um, some of the, the hands-on. Uh, physical medicine approaches and manual medicine approaches and osteopathy and that's really my my chief joy well I know you and Becky have talked a lot about integrative medicine there's a lot of excitement uh, about that that area and it's getting more exciting all the time you know I've uh, and we were trying to before we sat down to interview we were you we were trying to figure out what when we first met we figured sometime between 1994 and 99 probably late 90s so I've had a chance to work with you when we used to do, uh, Mike Bolger and I would come out and do the alumni dinners in the Seattle area. And then you spent six years representing that area on our alumni association board. You've been involved with reunions. Uh, you and Liz are, are members of the Walter Zeit Fellowship. And even though you've basically answered this question already with your earlier answers, you know, what, you know, maybe, you know, if that, that's your answer, what has gotten you to stay involved and I think I know because you had such wonderful you know accolades about the college earlier but you know a little bit more about why you've enjoyed being a volunteer uh, since you've graduated and it's you know now it goes back you know 17 18 years that you've been a you know involved as a volunteer well what I like is the fact that uh, while I have all these good memories it also keeps me connected uh, and I think you as a medical historian know I think uh, Dr. Uh, Embring's book, A Bridge to the Future, I, I'm hoping to continue to build the bridge uh, to the future for the school because the school, and we saw a great lecture today was by a good Dr. One. Wilson, tremendous lecture. It's had its bumps and it's a solid school and it's really been terrific for me and I think it's going to be terrific for not only you know, residents of the state of uh, Wisconsin, but it's spreading out uh, around the country. Well, you know how many alumni we have in California, Oregon, and Washington, a lot, a, a few thousand. So it's, um, yeah, we have our, our footprint all over the place. It's, a, it's certainly a great institution, and it's kind of exciting what's going on, uh, starting two new medical schools the last couple of years, and pharmacy school, and I have a feeling that when we get to our 125th, we may even hear about a, you know, something university because that's what we are. We're a health sciences university. Um, you graduated in 1984, not that long ago, but and you're still teaching residents, so you have a good idea about current medical education. 
see any big differences between, uh, you know, those time frame, 30, 30 some years uh, since you graduated compared to when you were in medical school? Well, yeah, there's a big difference in how the trainees learn in terms of their devices and, and, uh, and so on. That's, that's, a, that's a big, uh, big difference. And uh, then you have the, um, you know, I, I have, I just taught a millennial, 24-year-old medical student and who had her own opinions about a lot of things despite no experience or really understanding. And so um, it's nice to still have, you know, the fellows and the residents helping to shape some of the students as they come through. So there's uh, certainly different uh, generations um, in terms of when I did a lot of my own inpatient work and was late in the hospital now with the advent of hospitalists and the changing relationships and the electronic medical record and uh, you know I, I loved my time. I was a solo practitioner for 18 years before six years ago going back uh, into a big clinic environment uh, where I had the opportunity to know what it was like to run a one doc shop with my wife as uh, the manager. I mean, I've had, I can tell you what a great career I've had. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like I'm young, Bill. We are, you look young. That's why now that I know you're closer to my age, I'm going, man, you look really good. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, it is cool. I, I, I know uh, it's gotta be exciting to, uh, at your young age, but uh, you know, that you're still teaching, which is, is great. That's gotta be uh, very exciting. Uh, you know, I'll tell you something, Mark, it's, uh, you know, I've enjoyed getting to know you and, and obviously we'll stay, stay in touch over the years and uh, it, it, the Medical College of Wisconsin is a fun place to be. Uh, I'm happy I'm back doing my part-time job after a whopping three and a half months of being retired. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I'm grateful for this opportunity. Oh, thank you. There we go.